Thirty. This is uh, this is a military equipment purchase request and policy update per Assembly Bill Eight. Excuse me, four eighty one. Chief, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor Keeley and Council Members Bernie Escalani, the Chief of Police. Um, so we have uh, a presentation for all of you. We have uh, Kathy Brothers, our Principal Management Analyst from the Police Department. We have Sergeant Trog from the Police Department. We also have Sergeant Burrell, uh, who will all be participating in the in the presentation. Um, and for the sake of, of time, and uh, we're going to get started as soon as they're ready to go. Thank you, Chief. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, as the Chief mentioned, I'm Sergeant Josh Trog, with the City of Santa Cruz Police Department. Uh, while we're working on getting the uh, presentation up, I will be speaking to the AB 481 aspect of uh, our request related to this piece of equipment. Uh, that's in my capacity as the military equipment coordinator for the police department. And then Sergeant Brad Burrell will be discussing the uh, proposal uh, in more detail related to the equipment that we're requesting. Thank you, sir. So the background on uh, AB 41 uh, was effective in January of 2022. It establishes the requirements for purchasing, uh, raising funds, and for use of items deemed military equipment, um, we have to attain, uh, obtain approval from the governing body and establish policy and posting requirements, and we must cease use of items that are not approved. Our recommendations uh, for this uh, introduce publication and ordinance amending City of Santa Cruz Municipal Code Chapter 9.90, AB 41 Military Equipment Use, if the council approves the recommendation number one, uh, the recommendation number two is to adopt a resolution amending the fiscal year 2024 budget in the amount of $170,942 from the police asset forfeiture 214 fund. And a recommendation number three would be to approve a five-year purchase contract with Axon Incorporated. And I uh, apologize, I have to back up slightly. Uh, we have representatives from Axon Incorporated available remotely for questions, as well as Stephanie Duck with the City Attorney's Office, who has worked with us in the uh, development of all the draft policies and the proposal. Uh, so our current uh, military equipment policy is covered under policy number 705. Uh, this policy includes the definition of military equipment, military equipment coordinator and their responsibilities, how we coordinate with other jurisdictions, covers the approval, annual report, community engagement requirements, uh, and the public complaint process. Uh, what we are uh, requesting to uh, deal with in this proposal is the current military equipment inventory. Uh, if it was approved, we would be updating it to include uh, the equipment that we're requesting. This QR code that is uh, on the slide is a direct link to our transparency portal and all of the associated uh, items with military equipment policy uh, and the complaint procedure. So the piece of equipment that we are discussing this evening is the Skydio X-10 unmanned aerial system. Uh, it falls under category one of uh, the requirements of AB 481 and military equipment. Um, it's, they're also referred to as drones. Um, some of the capabilities of this piece of equipment has a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour, 40-minute uh, run time, and it can operate seven and a half miles from the controller. Uh, it's got specialized uh, software that... Uh, can come with it, uh, mapping software, uh, telephoto, wide angle, and thermal cameras as a spotlight and speaker as well as microphones uh, that can be attached to it for two-way communication. Uh, can be operated day or night, 
Uh, it has 360 visibility, meaning that when, they, when it's being operated, there's no blind spots. Uh, gives the controller better control of the device. Uh, it's got GPS sensors, uh, so we know where it is at all times. Uh, visible and infrared light sensors. Uh, this is the capability of accepting a detachable spotlight that's uh, 2,800 lumens, quite bright. Uh, it has flight as assistance and object avoidance software basically to help us so we don't crash it. Um, the cost uh, over five years would be $227,224. Uh, that includes uh, $27,708 to outfit two patrol vehicles uh, with the equipment required to support these uh, UAS. Uh, five uh, UAS plus software training and subscriptions. Uh, this would be funded uh, out of the asset forfeiture funds and patrol general funds. Covered in our draft policy are the intended uses as well as the prohibited uses. Um, these are some of the reasons that we would deploy these devices. Uh, natural disaster or public safety emergency uh, in support of search and rescue or water rescue operations, uh, lost or missing persons, crime scene and traffic collision documentation, uh, mutual aid, our fire department or outside agencies needing the uh, services of this piece of equipment. Um, as an aid in de-escalation, uh, it's a tool that would help maintain uh, an audio and visual connection with someone uh, who may be armed, but give us the ability to stand off a little bit and work through uh, the problem without putting officers right there uh, in, in the mix if we do not have to, provide us some, some space and time to, to work through whatever the situation may be. Uh, in uh, the service of a search and or arrest warrant, uh, crime in progress, uh, and locating a fleeing suspect. Those would be the, the intended authorized uses. Prohibited uses, uh, this device cannot be weaponized. There is no intent to weaponize it. Uh, we will not use facial recognition uh, software in conjunction with this. Uh, we will not use it in random surveillance activities. Uh, it will not be used to target, harass, intimidate, or discriminate against any individual group or protected class. Will not be used for personal business, nor the routine monitoring of a mass gathering, protest, or demonstrations where security concerns or criminal activity do not exist. Again, this is the same QR code that uh, will take anyone who scans it to uh, our transparency portal. Uh, in addition to the military equipment policy, we have a draft policy uh, regarding the use of unmanned aerial systems, policy 607. Uh, this, I've discussed the uh, military equipment policy 705. Uh, within the military equipment uh, policy, we have to provide an annual report to council for all things covered under that policy. So uh, if the UAS program was approved and, in, and adopted and uh, put into service, all use of that equipment would be covered under the annual uh, report requirement that we have to make to, to council. Uh, in addition to all of the internal policies and procedures, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration uh, licenses the operators, so they have uh, some oversight of what is done. Uh, we would pursue getting a certificate of authorization, which is uh, basically permissions on how we operate uh, the UAS systems uh, under the authority of the FAA. Um, information related to these would be available on the transparency portal, as uh, all of the equipment is. And then there is a software product called DroneSense that uh, is available to come with these devices that helps in the transparency and tracking of uh, the devices and it provides uh, data 
available data that can be used uh, to know when they're being deployed, how they're being deployed, uh, and things like that. So with that, that is the AB 481 aspect of our proposal for this system. Uh, I will be turning this over to Sergeant Brad Burrell to discuss the program uh, proposal in more detail. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Keeley, Council Members, my name is Brad Burrell. I'm a sergeant with the Santa Cruz Police Department. Um, we're excited to uh, bring you this product to see it for yourself in action. Uh, as you'll see in this video, um, the specific Skydio X10 um, is intended to be used very simply. Uh, it is versatile. It is maneuverable. The image quality is high get to locations that uh, few can, and when it comes down to it, the visual acuity that provides uh, operators on the ground with um, significant intelligence is invaluable. One of the big selling points for X10, uh, if uh, Council approves, is uh, the ability to have the uh, uh, highest uh, rated technology and software related to uh, traffic accident investigations. Uh, as you all know, uh, traffic accidents uh, are significant, uh, especially if they're um, extended in nature with regards to uh, the impact they have on the public, uh, road congestion, um, and delays in people just getting from point A to point B. Um, what we found with the Scotty X10 is that the software that they have you can see here in the 3D image quality, is not only done with the highest quality that we found, is it's also done expeditiously. Um, you're cutting down the time of which officers would need to be on scene investigating a, 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 a traffic accident, um, collecting what they need, and then getting the road clear. We're reducing uh, the risk associated with the public, EMS personnel, fire personnel, police personnel, by uh, reducing the closure of the roadway and allowing it to be open for people uh, to drive freely and uh, get those vehicles out of the way. Uh, what you see here is going to be the uh, actual footage of an event that occurred in 2022 um, where a violent uh, suspect was uh, fleeing from officers related to an incident where officers believed him to be armed with a firearm. Um, the uh, subject was wanted for multiple felony violent crimes. As you can see in the middle of the screen, the subject is wandering through backyards of a residential area, um, hopping fences. What this is providing is real-time live updates to officers on the ground that are containing and isolating an incident or a subject, um, trying to coordinate resources effectively to converge instead of a needle and haystack approach. Uh, the real-time live updates that the UAS would provide is invaluable when it comes down to um, linking officers with the operator of the UAS and uh, effectively and ideally safely uh, able to um, apprehend that individual without um, any other undue risk, unnecessary risk for the public, as you can see with residents coming out uh, on their decks in the area, uh, pointing towards officers, pointing towards the subject, um, and hopefully reducing time where officers are inconveniencing people in their daily life. This is where we see, uh, if council approves, the uh, benefits that we can uh, join with the fire department um, and other EMS personnel uh, during the known natural disasters uh, that we are all too familiar with in this area. Um, the UAS can go places where others can't whether it's personnel on the ground, whether it's helicopters, uh, fixed-winged aircraft. Uh, the UAS is that invaluable rapid deployment um, item that can be utilized um, almost anywhere, um, pending certain conditions such as rain or what have you. Um, this is something that is giving the intelligence that is so needed for incident command 
to make informed, prudent decisions, uh, to deploy personnel and resources effectively to precise locations. Another example of uh, our Santa Cruz Fire Department team working uh, in the, I'm assuming, somewhere on West Cliff area. Um, but uh, when it comes down to the terrain of our community, whether it be the coastline, whether it be the forested area, uh, we have the full spectrum. Uh, the UAS is able to provide us that versatility and maneuverability while providing that real-time update to a rapidly evolving situation uh, to, uh, in this case, uh, fire personnel that are putting their lives at risk uh, to gain situational awareness, uh, whether it be tides, whether it be things that the incident commander may not see or team leader to then provide that overwatch to uh, communicate their therefore to the personnel that are on scene trying to locate um, people whether it be in the ocean or wherever else um, like Sergeant Trog said earlier the uh, visual uh, capabilities of these UAS devices is um, cutting edge and can operate during the nighttime as well as you all know we have uh, elderly people that can uh, walk away from um, care facilities and finding them in the, especially at nighttime, is extremely difficult. As we transition here to um, the de-escalation portion of where the U.S. device can uh, come in handy, is also addressing the sanctity of life and how we are trying to uh, utilize any strategies and techniques at our disposal to slow things down, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, we cannot assess what we do not know or we cannot see. The value of this, what the UAS can provide, is allowing officers to stay a safe distance away as it maneuvers into a more high-risk or threatening area and provide those officers with that real-time data to determine exactly how urgent the matter of which they're investigating really is. In this case, it's a training scenario. I should have prefaced that for you. Um, but this is a situation of what you can actually see, the clarity of which you can see it, and the intelligence that's providing to officers, incident command, uh, to, again, make more informed, competent decisions about uh, how to deploy, uh, deploy resources appropriately. Again, with uh, Council's approval, uh, we intend to um, not only um, purchase UAS devices, uh, but also outfit patrol vehicles um, to rapidly charge these devices for um, coordinate, coordinated usage with uh, multi-UAS <laughs> devices during an incident or prolonged incident operation. Um, not only will these devices be able to be rapidly charged, but they can also provide that uh, monitor for uh, incident command to be informed of uh, the real-time information that the UAS is providing and provide them the ability to make informed decisions and serve as a mobile command center, if you will. Again, if uh, Council approves, uh, the Scadio, um UAS device has proven to us that not only is it capable with its high-tech software, uh, visual um, performance, and um, maneuverability, but it also has the highest standards as it relates to its compliance with uh, NDAA um, software, hardware, um, and the respect for people's privacy as it relates to what they are obtaining. Um, our other vendor that we are all already partnered with is Axon, uh, of which they already store our uh, body camera footage, in-car camera footage, auto tagging, interview room videos, uh, etc. cetera, um, would work in conjunction with Skydio to house those videos, house that data that um, would be collected uh, via the UAS. As you can see, the majority of the costs broken down over five years are from hardware and software primarily. Um, but as you can see in the videos, the quality uh, is very high, and um, 
I, I will make a point of uh, the speaker and microphone feature on the de-escalation aspect of that providing us the ability to pro, uh, communicate two-way communication with uh, those involved with the incident, uh, involved potentially crisis negotiation teams, uh, mental health teams, liaisons that are already embedded with the Santa Cruz Police Department, uh, and provide that uh, comprehensive service to the community of Santa Cruz. As you can see, uh, the training and the subscriptions are also uh, embedded in the cost, broken down over five years. Um, you can see it uh, incrementally, uh, year by year, from one to five. Sergeant, thank you for the presentation. Chief, back to you, sir. So that's that's our uh, our presentation, and again, uh, we have two representatives from Axon available for any sort of like technical questions regarding the equipment. Uh, we also are, are joined by um, Chief Odie's team here from our fire department. If you had any questions specifically to how this equipment could be utilized as well, just in uh, you know the sense of public safety in general. Um, we've had many conversations about collaborating with this sort of equipment and how this benefits our community as a whole and our ability to respond to different emergencies, whether it's fire-related or, or law enforcement-related. So we have people here to answer questions. Chief, thank you very much. Let me see if there are initial questions to the chief. Ms. Brown is recognized. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm going to try to keep the words of my uh, one of my colleagues that drones can be used for good in my head here as I um, as I've been reviewing the material and um, listening to the presentation um, I have a couple of questions about uh, retention of the data um, it, because the from what I the material we received um, that the data, collected will be retained as provided in the established records retention schedule. Um, maybe I missed it because there were a lot of materials for this packet, but um, what, it, what is that um, retention period for drone footage? Well, Sergeant Trog answered a little more detail, but um, in most of the circumstances, the video and or audio will be evidence in a crime, so it will all go through a, a, a standard schedule that we already have in place with Axon related to our body-worn camera footage as well. But I'll let okay, so it's a similar, the body-worn, the body camera rules, or the, it's, that's what you're using? Yes, it would fall under the same rules based on crime classification or lack of crime classification as to how long it would be stored in the already existing Axon uh, storage system. And that is, can you, do you know that off the top of your head? Is it 30 days? For it, it, oh, it's it's significantly longer. So for felony crimes, it can be up to forever. Uh, misdemeanors, it could be two years, non-evidentiary, two years or less. It just depends on the nature of the incident. That I guess, yeah. So for when, where it's used for criminal proceeding, and I understand that, but I was just thinking about um, materials that are not going to be used in, so non-evidentiary. It can be up to two years that it's that stored? It can be. Uh, I don't know if all non-evidentiary items fall under that criteria, um, but it would just, it would be whatever the current axon schedule for retention is. Okay. Um, thanks. Council Member Bruner. Thank you. Um, I was looking at the policy that was posted. It just, I thought I saw something around that time frame um, regarding data retention, but I'm not going to scroll right now. Um, but I, it, it, you know, the. My, I have a couple questions, um, and we've received a few emails with questions, and, um, you know, I just want to uh, voice some concerns from our community as well. And our role here is public safety and, um, I, you know, how, how to best support uh, the community, and um, at the same time, too, we all are also voices of 
the community. And so um, I know I shared um, a couple of concerns, but um, especially for black and brown people, um, we've done a lot of work since 2020 in police policies um, to you know, eliminate facial recognition software to, you know, eliminate some of the the um, police policies that have really affected people of color. And um, this concept of surveillance is a really scary thing for people. It's, it's physiological reactions, um, even... Me, I've been pulled over for my tail light or brake light being out, and it's scary experience being someone of color. And so, I just have to um, say thank you for posting the policy. And I know that's required. Uh, and I, I, how long has it been up for? Thirty days. Yeah, I think actually over thirty days now. Um. This was on the last agenda, but we moved it, so. Yeah, and um, I know I reached out to you with some questions prior to today's meeting, so thank you for answering and, and incorporating, like, the uses of um, why we need these. What is the benefit to community over community concern? And to me, um, seeing uh, so many of those examples in terms of, car crashes and in terms of um, de-escalation with our mental health liaisons and um, really creating safety, especially with our low staffing in the police department. This is essentially another body, but it's not a human body that can be killed. Um, this is um, a in place of a police officer that has a lot more capability and um, you know it's 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 something that um, I think that similar some of those aerial views to a helicopter maybe that I've seen other places use in certain situations so I appreciate all those examples of of how to use it and i see fire here so i know with our natural disasters and even our wharf crew um having the ability to utilize um some type of drone equipment um going under the wharf and seeing the pilings and you know there's so many shared cross-departmental uses that that this can be used um and um I just want to know, my question is, how, like, have you used drones before this purchase, and um, um, do other jurisdictions share across, not only, um, like, across our departments, but I know that other equipment is shared across jurisdictions. How does, how, how does that? Yeah, um so the sheriff's department has, I think, 24-ish of, uh, of these. Um, and actually, I could give you an example. Just this last Saturday night, we requested them uh, their mutual aid and, and their, the request of their drones for a, a high-risk situation that happened over on the west side of town with somebody that was armed and had shot the, the firearm uh, from inside the house. And we were able to use a drone to be able to sort of see around the house and, and before we start sending uniformed personnel towards the house, uh, we're able to assess for any sort of risks that are waiting for us potentially. So um, we just used the drone on Saturday night, I think it was. How um, can someone speak to um, how you would best um, address the concerns of, of abuse of drones in terms of surveillance and, and um, loss of civil liberties and, you know, targeting black and brown people. There's already this distrust and unsafe feeling that exists um, just by your uniforms. And so how would you um, address some of those concerns? Well... 
specifically in the policy 607.6, it, it lists some of those specific examples out as far as prohibited use to conduct random surveillance activities or to target uh, any sort of uh, anybody based on the perceived um, gender, uh, race, uh, and, a, and a number of factors right there. So it's all called out for all of those prohibited usage to, you know, prohibited use to harass, intimidate, discriminate. Um, all of that is, is spelled out here. So What's the consequence to violating prohibited use? What's to stop someone from... Well, it, it would really depend on the severity of the violation of policy. We typically... Uh, use progressive discipline in, in our department, but there could be examples of something that was so grossly negligent that it could lead to termination. Um, but if it was a smaller violation of, of policy, then it goes through the process. We also have the independent auditor that participates with us and, and reviews uh, our investigations related to any sort of violation of our policy. Thank you. Councilmember Colin Tar Johnson is recognized. Thank you, um, Chief, uh, for the presentation. I just wanted to know what's the ongoing cost. So there was a cost breakdown in one of the slides to get us get this program launched. Should the council approve? Um, but once we've done the sort of the software and the training, do we have a sense of the ongoing cost? Uh, Kathy Brothers, PMA, the PD. The ongoing costs, uh, what you see here, the $254,932 covers all of the costs for hardware, software, training, vehicle, uh, outfitting the vehicles, and subscriptions. So we shouldn't see any extra costs when it comes to maintaining the hardware. Um, we are already have an Axon contract that we where we store all of our evidence, so we shouldn't see any extra costs there. Uh, the only other cost would be basically just well, this also covers licensing for the pilots mm -hmm. and the cost to maintain that license over five years. So just putting out officers in the field to operate these and the time spent. That technically could be a cost, but that would be folded into our just regular operational costs. It's really one time, it sounds like. Yeah, we tried this. What's nice about Axon and Skydio is they've really packaged this really well, and it's very comprehensive, and so we're able to forecast over five years, and um, we don't expect to spend any more than this. The warranties cover in case a drone becomes defective or damaged, we have warranties that will cover replacement at no extra cost. Perfect. Thank you. And then just one last question. Um, Chief, you mentioned that we've collaborated and partnered with the sheriff's office as they have, I think you said, 24 drones. Um, what are the constraints or challenges of continuing that type of collaboration rather than... Um, uh, owning our own drones? And, and I can maybe answer part of that question is that... W that the benefit I would see is we have our own trained officers, but I'd like you to, if you could just expand on that. Yeah, just a few challenges. One is is response time, obviously, uh, depending on whether they have an operator, a trained operator on duty, and where that person is coming from is, is a challenge sometimes, or could be a challenge. I would also say if you had uh, multiple incidents uh, occurring at the same time, um, I could think of something similar to a, a school threat. Typically, we are very concerned about um, multiple threats coming in at the same time in different jurisdictions. That would be another uh, example where um, their resources obviously are going to focus on their jurisdiction. Um, and I can also think from a fire perspective, um, you know, I'm sure... During the CZU fire, there were multiple drones being used in multiple different locations to give the fire personnel intelligence of the you know different areas of, of that fire. So that would be another challenge. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. For the questions or comments by council members. 
This would be the uh, chief. Thank you. We're going to take some public testimony now. This would be the opportunity for anyone who is with us in chambers this evening who wishes to testify this on this item to do so up to three minutes. Is there anyone with us who wishes to make such comments? Welcome. One. Um, good evening. Good evening. My name is Megan Goltz. I'm a local filmmaker here, and I've flown drones, seen drones, seen a lot of them crash. And I'm also just kind of curious and concerned about who would be operating this. There is a lot of time that goes into setting it up, getting it in the air, getting it going. Battery life's maybe 40 minutes, I think you guys said. So that's maybe 30 minutes of usability because it also needs time to come back to its original place and land. If they can operate it from up to seven and a half miles away, what's going to happen if there needs to be somebody on the ground? Also, cameras are very limiting. As we can see, like the cameras, the positionality gives you a very limited perspective versus somebody on the ground who can make distinguished judgment calls on, on what the need is, what the, what the other problems are happening, other you know impacts from a car accident or, or what have you. Um, so I feel like that's very, very limiting as far as response to public safety. And my concern also was I heard a little bit about um, not impacting the public by being able to fly drones over like neighborhoods to see if there's somebody you know lurking in a backyard. But what about those bystanders who are also being uh, on a camera and staying in the system for maybe up to two years, maybe longer, based on uh, their perspective of what's evidence or what's not? Um, and that's really concerning to me because there's no way to check that. There's no way to honor like our Fourth Amendment right of privacy because if we were to make it publicly available for people to cross check, that would eliminate the privacy. And also it would, uh, you know, if there's supposed to be some level of transparency and uh, provisions about how this data is being used or not, how are we able to cross check that? How are we able to know that? Um, so I'm very concerned about the use of this because of you know problems with profiling and also as somebody who's flown a drone you're operating it from sometimes a screen as small as your telephone it is very 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 easy to miss id something or misjudge something and not know what you're really looking at especially if you're in a cop cruiser trying to like chase the drone also if the drone's flying 45 miles an hour what if it hits a bird or something like that and you're wasting all this time and resource to try to capture something on camera when you could just be boots on the ground um I just think that that seems like a very expensive and costly use of resource and time, uh, especially if time is limited in a case of a crisis, in a case of, uh, of a flood or a fire or something like that, where you might not be able to see other things going on um, and other factors at play. So I, I just urge city council to, to reject this, this uh, ask for a purchase of military equipment and further militarizing uh, the police here that are, are meant to be our guardians and not warriors. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. What we're going to do is we're going to toggle back and forth. So you'll be right after the next person online. Next person online. Good evening. Welcome to the council meeting. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Liz Fitzgerald, Santa Cruz resident and local psychotherapist. Um, I'm really concerned um, about the militarization of our police as an answer to any of our issues and that, some, that it's something that could bring peace. Um, you know, hearing that you all passed this peace resolution vis-a-vis -vis the ceasefire in Gaza um, really kind of sharing, okay, like January, let's have that be peace month. And now there's this proposal to militarize our police. I don't see those going together with Santa Cruz values. If our Santa Cruz values are to bring peace to this city into this County, into this world. Um, also as a mental health professional, I'm disgusted and horrified to imagine these being used, these weapons, these, um, this militarization, the way that, you know, the council member was speaking to BIPOC being especially triggered and traumatized, understandably, by police presence, by police weapons, that, that to de-escalate a mental health crisis using this kind of, um, 
this kind of technology would cause more harm than help. Um, I'm also just the idea of you all spending our money to both militarize our police force and to violate our privacy at the same time. I mean, that's just the, the devil violation um, is, is unspeakable. Um, let me see. Also, I, I just have a lot of concern about the piece about protests where the, the statement was made that they would be used for protests and other demonstrations if security concerns existed. Um, how will those be assessed? Aren't, wouldn't there always be security concerns? Will these always be used at protests? Um, and there's clearly, it sounds like there's really no policy in place to reinforce if there's a, a violation of the use agreement being made here in terms of how the drones are used. And that is extremely concerning to me. It sounds like there's uh, there's not really a plan for that. Um, and so I am not in support of this resolution of the militarization of our police. Um, and with that, I yield my time. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Welcome. My, uh, my name is QZ. Uh, the Bearcat didn't decrease the uh, crime rate in Santa Cruz, and the drone is not going to do it. Same thing. And uh, I don't like the cost. That's all, that's all I want to say. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next person, then we'll be with you in just a second. We'll take somebody online back to you. Next person online, good evening. Welcome to the council meeting. Hello. Um, I've got some questions. Uh, my first question is, when was the last time the sheriff was using all 24 drones simultaneously? That seems like an excessive amount of drones. Um, although with a wildfire, I could see that being used. So I'd love to know the answer to that. I know that uh, council doesn't respond to questions generally, but um, if we could ask that, that would be great. Um, also, when was the last time a simultaneous use of drones was done by the sheriff and Santa Cruz Police Department? How many drones were involved with that? It seems like with the sheriff being such an integral part of our kind of joint law enforcement team and then being so loaded with 24 drones. It's, it seems like this is a huge amount of money to invest in a drone policy that is completely redundant and uh, potentially pretty wasteful and something that uh, so far the public comments have spoken, you know, that Santa Cruz is uncomfortable with. Um, I generally, you know, I support the idea of using tools for police other than guns. I think it's great to have uh, more eyes and more angles and more intelligence, but it seems like we already have access to all of that, and this is just um, something to eliminate that partnership and pretend that that partnership doesn't exist and a, a great use of tax dollars in a wasteful way. Um, I yield my time. Thank you so much. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, my name is Irene O'Connell. I've lived in Santa Cruz for 15 years. And since then, I've seen an increase in militarization of our police departments. I remember the Bearcat. I remember uh, the uh, assault launch um, shotguns. And even though this is not that, I want to just... Uh, uh, lift up that this is sets a precedent for increasing the military militarization of police and increasing that um, AB 481 just continues to uh, set the precedent for increasing the budget. Um, I also echo uh, the comments by Council Member Bruner. I think there's a psychological impact to the community for having these drones. Um, I also echo the comments earlier of like, why can't there be more mutual aid uh, on part of the sheriff to share those 24 drones if they're really that useful and they really have that many, um, you know, 225 upwards thousand dollars. I wonder what else could that that funding be for? There's so many issues for this city, and I really could imagine that funding being used for housing, for public education, for safety in ways that don't require further militarization of the police. Another thing that's disturbing is seeing the same technology um, being used in Gaza on the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, it's hard to trust that this isn't going to be used for surveillance. And it's hard to trust the judgment of police departments uh, when it comes to determining what 
mass action or protest is dangerous or criminal because I think that part of the institution of policing is to protect private property, status quo, and when people use their First Amendment rights to mobilize and practice free speech, it becomes dangerous. So just want to encourage this, the council to um, question, do we need to further militarize the police? We are not the enemy. Residents are not the enemy. And I hope that the police department can use good judgment and that the council can use good accountability in making sure that that, um, uh, that QR code of, of checking to see how these are being used if they are approved. But I want to urge you to reject this uh, amendment increase and um, to encourage more mutual aid, as they say, between the sheriff department and the police department. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here. Ms. Bush, we'll take the next person online. Good evening. Welcome to the city council meeting. Uh, hello, my name is Ani. Um, I'd like to start with, I strongly oppose the Bill 481 PD. I see this as a major expense for our county, and the long-term agreement is, you know, something that needs to be taken very seriously. The use of military, you know, grade face recognition drones goes against our right of privacy as civilians. This is not a violent or dangerous city, not really. And the extreme use of this technology is honestly egregious. I personally find it incredibly hypocritical as well that the Santa Cruz City Council officials refused to pass a ceasefire resolution, specifically item 29, a few weeks ago, as it was, and um, altered some things in the name of peace. And here we are. But, you know, you all are eager to accommodate more police gadgets at a military level. Um, these are the same drones being used against Palestinians as we speak. And using such extreme force to survey us as civilians is honestly frightening. This is a huge opportunity for major problems to arise and abuse of power. This is an excessive amount of drones, and it's very expensive. I see this as honestly inciting more fear and distrust of the SCPD with these drones. What, you know, what are the consequences for officers abusing the use of them? Um, there is just such a need for community stabilizing to be done that almost $200,000 of allocation of funds can go to instead of drones. Um, I honestly urge every one of you to reflect on what this means for Santa Cruz. And I honestly don't see it having a positive effect on the public. So that's my piece. I reside the rest of my time. Thank you so much. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. My name is James Ewing Whitman. Um, I missed some of the presentation. I heard a couple minutes before the police chief took over. And, um, I was present during a demonstration on January 11th, I believe, at the Capitola City Council where they were going over their drone operations and such. Uh, my comment to the police chief is that, that I hope that the equipment that the videos you show, the equipment is actually much better than what the videos show. So I'm not sure about the equipment that's going to be used. But I think that um, for public safety, it's probably quite useful. I mean, I know it would be quite useful. I can think of countless examples. But um, the community seems to be concerned about their privacy and stuff. I mean, I have two of the latest 2023 weapons in my hand by Motorola. These are great freaking tools. Um, what brought me into this room more than four and a half year, years ago was why are we allowing military weapons in civilian locations? And at the time, Mr. Tony Condotti and Ms. Wat Mrs. Watkins and Sandy Brown are the only ones besides the two clerks that were here four and a half years ago. And uh, it just seems there's no time. Got a minute and 40. Just because regulations have been passed, like the 1996 FCC 702, that the only complaint people can make about the control devices, the frequency devices, this is one, um, is the way they look. Now, a lot of things have happened since then. Uh, once the scamdemic started, what was I forget that day? I was here on a Monday and got a paper piece of paper saying it'd be a live meeting, and then I unfortunately witnessed 
some real panic in Mr. Andy Mills, and I kind of picked my battles. It was a rainy day, but this building closed down for two years to the public. But the next day, extensive public works operations. Matt, you shouldn't leave. Excuse me. Come here. Stay with me. He's the one that's no, in no, charge of this me. group. Stay with me. Yes. So I'll reiterate, the use of the drones, I think, can be used for many positive purposes. But the frequency weapons that have been rubber stamped through this room and the county are of real concern that none of the public is bringing that up. So I'm not quite sure what else to say, but I was asking Matt not to leave the room because he's the one that controls you guys like you guys are little helium balloons being held. Whether or not you think you have control, this is not a city for the citizens. This is a corporation, and you protect your stockholders. And those stockholders seem to be organizations like Verizon and the FCC. So what? I got 14 seconds. So I'm all for law enforcement being peace officers and doing the best they can. And if this equipment it puts them in a safer position to do that, that's great. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Next person online, good evening. Welcome to the city council meeting. What? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi. Um, I am chiming in to say that I um, strongly oppose the increase in the budget for this drone. I feel so unsettled that no one could even answer how long the data would be retained, even if the so whatever footage does not even contain any evidence. Um, and also in the slide, at one point it mentioned routine monitoring of mass gathering protests or demonstrations where security concerns or criminal activity does not exist. This is listed as a prohibited use. But who gets to decide what is and is not criminal activity or what is and is not a security concern? I do not trust that the Santa Cruz Police Department can distinguish with no biases and judgment what is a security concern and what is not. Also, as a local volunteer firefighter, CAL FIRE has their own drones. They do not need support or mutual aid from Santa Cruz Police Department to get the surveillance that they need. And like someone previously said, if there are 24, 28 drones that a neighboring department has, in what situation, in what disastrous reality are we living in that all of those need to be used as at once? This just seems like a toy that the police department wants to use for whatever quote unquote peace they're creating in town. This money could be used to serve the houseless community that is routinely criminalized. That money could be used for so many things that the community actually needs. And this is not one of those things. And like Councilwoman mentioned and other people mentioned, black and brown people already do not feel safe in this town, rightfully so. And this is not helping public safety. I love that whoever did the marketing for the police department is great. You put the natural <laughs> disaster first and the criminal activity at the bottom. That is propaganda right there. <laughs> You will not be using this for any natural disaster. It is a shame that you are marketing this as that. These are lies. Please do not show up for the community in this way, especially after you oppose the ceasefire resolution. That violence is not happening somewhere else. That violence is happening right here in our community. Please wake up to that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We are going to take... Um, we have, uh, we're going to take public comment up until seven o'clock on this item, and that will be the end of our public comment on it. Is there anyone with us in chambers who wishes to make a comment? Seeing and hearing, we none, we will go to the next person online. We're going to the next person online. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, my name is Stacey Garcia, and I'm so deeply concerned about this item. 
and I'm calling you all to urge you to vote no on item number 30. Militarizing our police department with this kind of equipment will not make our community safer. What makes our community safer is investment in food, housing, health care, and education. Please invest this money in resources that actually help our community instead of harming it. This military surveillance equipment will surely result in the unjust and disproportionate criminalization of black and brown people and peaceful protesters exercising their First Amendment right to end violence, discrimination, and an end to the ongoing U.S.-funded genocide. This month of January, you all declared to be, quote, peace month. And just today, you talked about wanting to make more equitable policy decisions. So I ask for you to just take a minute to consider equity in your decision making. Does militarizing the police bring more peace and equity to our community? If you answered yes, then I want you to think about who it brings more equity and peace to. Who does this decision actually benefit? Does this benefit your black and brown community members who are disproportionately criminalized, killed, and arrested by police across this country? Of course it doesn't. It actively works against racial equity and against peace. This particular surveillance equipment is so dangerous to everyone in our city and has proven that this particular racial recognition surveillance equipment disproportionately harms and actively targets black and brown communities. You can say it doesn't, but the evidence of this equipment's use proves otherwise. A racist policy as defined by Dr. Ibram X. Kennedy is, quote, any measure that produces or sustains racial inequity between racial groups, end quote. You have a responsibility to make an equitable policy decision for our city. If you want peace and you want equity, a vote yes will not achieve that. It will actively work against it. And as somebody who teaches and studies racial equity and justice for a living, let me be clear. A vote yes is a racist decision. A vote yes is a racist policy. I urge you to take actions that reflect your words and vote no on item number 30. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Good evening. Welcome. My name is um, Victor, and I've worked uh, here in Santa Cruz County for close to 10 years. Before that, I was a student here. And uh, after receiving my graduate degree, I returned back to the community. I've been working with youth. But before that, I worked and lived in uh, Beach Flats. So when I was living there at an earlier age, when I was younger, I never really saw or heard from the community members who were my peers that more policing made us safe. I never heard that. What I did hear was that everybody wanted more uh, recreational activities for the youth. They wanted more soccer team uh, uh, equipment. That they wanted arts programs for our youth. And I, I'm fortunate to say that I was participating in such things. Um, I saw a lot of those things as preventative measures for crime. And I saw those opportunities as being opportunities that created more um, relationships between youth that perhaps would not get to know each other. Um, recently, we saw uh, reporting again about what happened in Uvalde. That's a huge tragedy to our nation, to the world, really. And um, it took uh, enforcement, I think I heard it was over an hour to act. Now, I know that our nation has become more militarized in our police departments, so I question why that took that long a time, right? I know that the equipment was there, and yet there was no action. So what I'm trying to say is that we need more human um, interaction, not more technological integration into our departments. Now, I'm one that to say that I never had a good relationship as a child with police. But to this day, as an educator, I say two of the most important, uh, I say, institutions in our communities, I do, I do see a role for safety. Maybe policing the way it is right now, I don't see it, but I see uh, that that could be a resource, but to help build communities. The one is education and teachers. So we had that more integration of humanity and providing resources for children that would be now. Going back to Valdi, if we had more resources and training, that would have been, uh, that would have allocated more, um, let's say, uh, opportunities for the police officers to act appropriately, right? And for some reason they froze. That wasn't happening. And I think technology 
has taken away our humanity to ability to communicate with each other because we are always escalating. Because we put this thing in front of us in the middle, says it's going to take care of you. Now, I think North Dakota in the 2015s, they passed a bill for drones to weaponize drones, right? And in 2018, I remember watching television, the first death in Dallas when they armed a bomb and killed an individual. That was horrific for me to see in our own country. I don't want that to happen to us. Thank you, and I, I hope you oppose this. Thank you for your testimony, sir. Next person online, good evening. Welcome to the council meeting. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So I, I want to um, say that I am against the request to purchase military equipment. Um, I'm looking at a database um, that has information from the California Department of, Just of Justice. And um, from the years of 2016 to 2021, there have been four reports of police discrimination. 25% uh, ruled in favor of civilians. And um, in those years, there, there was also 90 complaints of police misconduct in the city of Santa Cruz. Um, so that already tells me that we shouldn't really trust the police department. And in the... Um, I believe it was in the year 2022, there was a Santa Cruz cop who killed a man, and he didn't face any charges, so that's also concerning. Um, and um, there have been many claims of racial bias against uh, Santa Cruz police. Um, and I just want to say that, um, kind of to repeat what other people have said, there's nothing natural about using these kind of technologies, especially on native land. Um, and um, it's just very shameful. Um, I think that you are all like white liberal hypocrites because you talk about all this peace. Um, peace is a white man's word. That's typically what white people like to say. Um, and there's nothing peaceful about this. It's very hypocritical because of what you, uh, the, the resolution that you recently passed. And then we just have the MLK march. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, and I understand that you are all, most of you, if not like the majority are white people, you will never understand what it feels to be discriminated against. Um, and this will, what this would allow, would, uh, it would make people feel scared, um, uh, black people and, um, because of police brutality, uh, um, Hispanics, people that are undocumented, um, because this is used at the border and, um, and even, um, People from the Middle East, um, Palestinians, a, a lot of people are in fear right now. So um, this would make it worse. And um, and I understand that uh, the council member Golder, she has uh, dressed as a Native American in the past um, for a costume party, which is very offensive. I understand that um, she wants to be oppressed really, really bad. But um, unfortunately, you will never experience that. And I hope you don't. And because of that reason, um, I don't think you guys understand um, what it means uh, to be in fear of these kind of things. Anyone else with us in chambers wish to provide testimony? Next person online. We're going to take uh, two more people online, this person and the next person. Good evening, person online. Welcome. Hello. My name is Isabel. I'm a Santa Cruz resident, and I'm seeking to ask the council to please not use a quarter of a million dollars to purchase five new surveillance drones. Cops should not be at war with the residents of their town, so why is the city council trying to arm them as if they are? Instead of spending money on housing, on life-saving services for our homeless neighbors, on building and repairing climate change resilient infrastructure, we instead want to give expensive military equipment to our police. Santa Cruz PD already has an armored attack vehicle chemical agent launching shotguns and grenades in its arsenal. And as other people have mentioned, the sheriff's office already has 24 drones. These new drones will be equipped with high resolution camera and audio equipment. We already know Santa Cruz PD has a track record of surveilling and intimidating private citizens, including during the wildcat strike at UCSC. And we are handing them the very expensive tools to do the same things at greater scope and scale. The summary report claims that the drones will allow Santa Cruz PD to, quote, de-escalate and or communicate with individuals during high-risk situations. 
Santa Cruz PD doesn't know how to de-escalate and care for the community even without the added distance and empowerment of military-grade surveillance drones. We can't kid ourselves into thinking that adding technology will magically make the police an ethical and well-functioning organization that is truly in service of the well-being of all Santa Cruz residents. But this item appears on the agenda after the city council shot down a ceasefire resolution after hundreds of people shut down the UCSC main entrance to protest the ongoing genocide in Palestine, and after the city council declared January to be, quote, peace month, is no accident. Santa Cruz seems to be gearing up for more aggressive suppression and intimidation of public speech, and a municipality truly at peace would not need to wage war against its own residents. I urge the council to vote no on all components of item 30. Thank you, and I yield my time. Well, thank you. Let me see if there is anyone. In council chambers, we'll go to the last public speaker. Will be the person online. Good evening, welcome. Hello, uh, I'm Douglas Filio, and I'm speaking to so I ask the council to vote no on item 30. I've been listening to this council today for the past couple of hours, and I saw some really inspiring topics being discussed, such as climate change, acts on homelessness, and so on. Topics which I think we should be discussing and investing our energy in community. So it really seems to me a little astonishing that while there are people in this community who struggle to put bread on the table or find a roof over their heads, that we are discussing whether or not to give military-grade surveillance technology to police. We have seen in several other states and in California as well how this technology can and has been unlawfully abused by the police, both in the Black Lives Matter movement of a few years ago and in the recent protests for Palestine to target the constitutional right to assemble and unlawfully arrest and intimidate protesters. This regardless of the fact that doing such a thing would be, like the speaker explained, prohibited. I find it very concerning that the speaker says that the drone will not be used in protests where security concerns do not exist, and security concern is precisely the justification that has been used over and over again in cases of extreme police violence and abuse of power. I don't know what possible good for our community could could be in further militarizing the police. They already have armored vehicles, shotguns, and grenades. It would be far more useful and work a great deal more towards the reduction of crime in this city if this money were to be spent addressing the causes of crime, such as poverty, food insecurity, employment insecurity, and the complete absence of affordable housing options in this city where living in someone's backyard can cost more than $1,500 a month. One dollar spent on any of these topics would be, in my mind, worth several hundred spent on giving the police department yet another way in which they can spy, wound, or even kill someone. If you are serious about actually making this community a better place, then we should be constantly thinking of those which this community has failed and the policies we can enact to help them. I do not see how buying spy drones does any of these things. To me, it seems to be yet another step towards a mass surveillance world and a naive surrender of our personal freedoms to an organization known to abuse its powers and authority. I therefore, again, urge the council to vote no on <coughs> item three. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. The matter is back before the council. Mayor would be glad to introduce entertain rather a motion the vice mayor is recognized i would like to move the staff recommendation there's a motion is there a second second there's a second by miss contar johnson madam vice mayor you may open on your motion so um i think despite the rallied uh public comments from um the people that organized this evening the majority of the people in Santa Cruz that I speak to um, are really excited about this, and they've reached out and said that this public safety tool is long overdue, and if it can save one life in a water rescue, a fire, or by one of our armed, I'm sorry, um, uniformed personnel not having to go in a situation where they um, could possibly die, then this is something that we absolutely must purchase. Thank you. For the debate or discussion, Ms. Brown is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. I, um, I'm not going to make a lot of comments. I don't think my powers of persuasion will be effective here, so I'm just going to say that uh, to the some of the folks who uh, 
called in and are present here. Um, I, I agree with you about concerns related to privacy, um, surveillance technologies. Um, I have mixed feelings about the potential good that drones can do. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, but I also share the concerns. And so I wanted to see if my colleagues might be willing to um, entertain uh, an amendment to this motion. It is a request for some specific information in the reporting that comes back to us. I appreciate that you've included an annual report. Um, I hope that the City Council will get some information out of those reports. And so um, I sent it to Bonnie and I'm just going it, to, it's, it's wordy, it's, it's not a lot, it's not a lot. It's just asking for some specific concrete information to come um, in those reports. And the place that this language would go would be in policy 607, uh, I think it's section B, hold on one second. Um, no, 607.4, it would be after the last bullet, which is the bottom of, or the top of page three <laughs> in our packet. Um, and so what it, it's asking to uh, provide information on the efficacy um, if it's if if the drone uh, foot it, having these drones actually achieves the identified purposes um, the total annual cost um, I, I think that you've shared that and it feels pretty clear to me but I think it would be good to have an assessment of that um, a description of how it was used um, and um, whether and how often that data um, was shared, because there is a question about sharing among agencies. It, it seems like that would be pretty simple to let us just include that in a report, so we know if it's being shared. Um, and with whom? Um, what other agencies? Um, and then I think, um, and this one, this one I feel very strongly about, uh, a breakdown of where the technology was deployed, because um, I do think that the concerns that people have expressed about uh, you know, potential profiling. The way that people experience surveillance in our community is different depending on who you are. And that breaks down, you know, race, class, um, you know, all kinds of ways. And so I, I do think it's important to understand where um, it's being used. Uh, and then a summary of if, if there are any complaints or concerns that have been shared um, directly related to the, the use um, and any other information. So I know that's very long, but it, it's actually quite simple. It's just so providing some specific information. Hold, hold on for just a second. Are you asking that to be accepted as a friendly amendment? I am. Okay, is that agreeable to you? I'd like to call on the chiefs to speak to what the feasibility of this. Um, I don't. Chief, somebody, sergeant. Or somebody from either department is fine if this Thank seems you. like feasible. So AB 41 already covers a majority of the uh, items listed in here that are requirements for us to report mm -hmm. in our annual report for all of the equipment. Um, there are things that um, are not specifically named in AB 41 at the, with the same terminology, but in essence, this is capturing what AB 41 already requires. Um, not entirely. There are there are things that are not in AB 41, but uh, the large majority of it. And then I would also like to add that, uh, with reference to uh, the ability, council has the ability to deny use per AB 41 of any of the equipment that's listed on there uh, as a um, check and balance to the equipment. Sergeant, if I could, if I could ask, would you? enumerate those items A through G which are not in the report that would otherwise come to us. What are the unique items that Councilmember Brown is asking for? Uh, the item D uh, is not specifically covered in AB 481 uh, as far as to how we would be able to report that out. I, I don't have the answer. Um, the specific geographical locations of where uh, the items are used, that's not in uh, AB 481. Um, specifically, uh, community complaints are in AB 481. Uh, we, we are 
We have to uh, report on those. And internal audits are required uh, for reporting in AB 41 uh, in our military use policy. So would I be right in thinking that items D and E would be unique ads to the report we would receive otherwise? That is correct. And let me ask if D is possible for you to gather and report on that information. Chief, can, can good I evening, ask sir. ask a question about that clarifying yes, question? So it says um, how often the data is shared, or were you referring to how often the equipment is deployed to outside agency. Councilmember Brown. The data. Okay. Yeah, that would be separate than outside of AB 481 at this point. But is that a knowable fact? Well, we would track how often it was deployed to an outside agency, and at that point, I would guess probably 99.9% .9 of the time it would be evidence in a criminal matter, so we would share that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I think since we're tracking how often and where it's deployed, we'd be able to capture the information uh, if we shared the data with a different agency. So D and E both are knowable to some extent. I mean, the extent to which you can gather that information and report on it. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a lot of conversation going on. I want to yeah. make sure we okay. give you time to answer this question. Ms. Brothers or Sergeant, let, let somebody get to the... My question again, I'll restate it for you, is on D and E, as I understand from the Chief, that are, that is not currently required in the report that would otherwise come to us. So on D and E, is that knowable information or the best effort you could make and you could add that to the report? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. I, I need to offer one clarification, Please sir. Do, sir. Uh, item A. Yes. Uh, we, we do have to report on how often we use it. AB 41 is not as subjective as it's a governing its effectiveness in the report. So that would be sort of, yes, partially addressed, but not totally as worded in this amendment. Okay. I wonder if a way to go here, Ms. Brown, is to check and see with the vice mayor if adding D and E only because the others appear to be covered in the report that would otherwise come to us. Is, is that an offer of a friendly amendment yes. from you? Would that work for you? Are, you? are you prepared to support the motion with the amendments? Yeah. I, oh, okay. I, this is not a weapon, so yeah. I have yeah, different good. feelings okay. about this. Okay. Good. <laughs> then absolutely. I'll, and it's, if it's okay. feasible, okay. I want these are, these are now added, Ms. Bush. Not A through G, only D and E would be added. That's agreeable to the makers, agreeable to the second. Where was the second? I lost yes, track of it. Yes. Thank you. Agreeable to the second. All right. Matters uh, still before the council for debate and discussion. Let me ask if there is further debate and discussion. Two points here. One is, if I understood it correctly, some have been characterizing it as a weapon, some haven't been. There is no capability for this to have a weapon on it, attached to it, added at some later date. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Uh, you also indicated that there would not be face recognition associated with this. That is clearly prohibited. That is and correct. The, and the entity with whom we have a contract, they're clear on that? That is correct. It Thank is you. in Third our question. Policy. Uh, there is no general fund money going into this. If I'm correct, it is asset forfeiture funds. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Is there further debate or discussion? Seeing, hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Council members Newsom? Aye. Brown? Aye. Watkins? Aye. Brunner? Aye. Kalantari Johnson? Aye. Vice Mayor Golder? Aye. Mayor Keeley? Aye. Motion passes and so ordered.